Hey, this is Bill for Sparky Channel, and today I'd like to discuss when you need a neutral wire in a switch box and when you may not need a neutral wire for your switch box according to NEC 2023. There are some significant changes from NEC 2020. Do you see that delta sign right to the left of the C? That delta sign means there is a deletion. And right away, you're probably thinking, oh, good, a deletion. Oh, that's great. Everything will be easier for us. Well, not necessarily. There may be a deletion to an exception. And that's what's going on here. They have deleted a whole exception. We'll get to that in just a second. But first, a little more background explanation. The yellow cable here is power coming into the light. This is the light box. And then we have another Romex cable going to the switch box. The electricity is off, but it's always a good idea to double check to make sure it's off. The current is coming into the light box. This is the way it typically was before 2011. After 2011, there was a huge change in the code which required neutral wires in switch boxes in most cases. In older wiring, the power frequently came into the ceiling light box and then a switch loop went down to the switch box which of course is usually next to a door. The power wire would probably be up in the attic and it comes into the light box right here. And here's your line wire, that's your hot wire. And here's your neutral wire right here. So your neutral wire doesn't go down here to the switch box. So anyway the hot line wire comes right here and it goes to a wire connector and it goes down here to this cable and it comes out here and you're probably saying well what in the world is a white wire doing in a switch box so the hot line wire comes here and then I'm going to color code this white wire and it goes down here and comes back out with color code it again so this is actually a hot wire it's bringing the electricity into this box all the time this can be hot all the time as long as the circuit breaker is on and then we have uh, the black wire goes back up through this cable here and it comes out right here. So you would hook the neutral uh, from the incoming hot cable right to your light and this switched black wire that comes from the switch box, that's this wire right here, you would also hook to your light. So you'd have a switch and one wire would be connected to one bronze terminal and the other wire would be connected to the other bronze terminal and the ground would be connected to the ground. In older homes, 50s, 60s, and early 70s, a lot of times you won't even have a ground wire. It'll just be a white and a black. And maybe they even got lazy and didn't uh, color code the white wire. You know, it might just be a white, a white and a black. This is a situation you see. And in the uh, 60s, 50s and 60s, these wires are actually cloth coated. The black gets lighter, the white gets darker, and they both look gray. You can't hardly tell the difference between the two. So and that's, that's what you see in older switch boxes. And then we have the grounds. We have the grounds coming in from this cable, and then it, it goes out from here down to here. And I have another ground going from the wire connector to the cross piece. So this is the way it was done prior to 2011. Before we go to the code book, you'll need to know that a neutral wire in the code book is called a grounded circuit conductor. That's because the neutral wires go to the grounding bus bar on your main panel. They are grounded. This is a grounded circuit conductor. Your hot wire is called the ungrounded circuit conductor. It goes to a circuit breaker. It is not grounded. So the neutral is the grounded circuit conductor. The hot wire is the ungrounded circuit conductor. Now let's go to the 2023 NEC code, find out what has been changed and what has been deleted. 404.2C, switches controlling lighting loads. The grounded circuit conductor for the controlled lighting circuit. So we're talking about the neutral here. We're talking about a neutral being in a switch box. The grounded circuit conductor for the 
controlled lighting circuit shall be installed at the location where switches control lighting loads that are supplied by a grounded general purpose branch circuit serving bathrooms, hallways, stairways, and habitable rooms or occupiable spaces as defined in the applicable building code where multiple switch locations control the same lighting load such that the entire floor area of the room or space is visible from the single or combined switch locations. The grounded circuit conductor shall only be required at one location. A grounded conductor shall not be required to be installed at lighting switch locations under any of the following conditions. One, where conductors enter the box in closing the switch through a raceway, provided that the raceway is large enough for all contained conductors, including a grounded conductor. An example of that would be EMT conduit or some other kind of conduit. And if you have room to put a grounded conductor in that raceway later on, then that is one of the conditions. Two, where snap switches with integral enclosures comply with 300.15E. Three, where lighting in the area is controlled by automatic means. And four, where a switch controls a receptacle load. And I'd like to show you the same code from 2020. And so these are the conditions that we just went over. Now in 2023, there's only four conditions. In 2020, we had five possible conditions where you wouldn't have to add that grounded conductor. And the one that got deleted is number two right here. Where the box enclosing the switch is accessible for the installation of an additional or replacement cable without removing finished materials. Just cross that one out for 2023. <laughs> the grounded conductor shall be extended to any switch location as necessary and shall be connected to switching devices that require line to neutral voltage to operate the electronics of the switch in the standby mode and shall meet the requirements of 404.22. Exception, the connection requirement shall not apply to replacement or retrofit switches installed in locations prior to local adoption of 404.2C and where the grounded conductor cannot be extended without removing finished materials. The number of electronic control switches on a branch circuit shall not exceed five and the number connected to any feeder on the load side of a system or main bonding jumper shall not exceed 25. For the purpose of this exception, a neutral bus bar in compliance with 200.2B and to which a main or system bonding jumper is connected shall not be limited as to the number of electronic lighting control switches connected. Informational note, the provision for a grounded conductor is to complete a circuit path for electronic lighting control devices. Okay, I've replaced the old 12-2 with ground with a 12-3 with ground. So I took out the old uh, cable that was going from the switch to the light box and I replaced it. This way we can meet the modern code and uh, now I can install a device like the Lutron timer switch that uses a neutral. So we now have a neutral in the switch box. See, this is a 12-3 with ground. We got three conductors. We got two hot conductors, the red and the black. These are called ungrounded conductors. And we have one grounded conductor called the neutral. And we have the ground. So that's 12-3 with ground. And it comes up here. I have hooked the neutrals together. And I'll take the neutral from my light and hook it right here. This is the hot wire that comes uh, from the hot cable and it goes down right to here. When the switch is on, the red wire comes up here, it comes out here and it turns on the light. So we got the, the neutral and the red uh, that will turn on the light. And then I have a spot over here for the ground. Take the ground, put it in your connector, 
Then we'll take the neutral and put it in the connector. Now we'll take the hot black wire and put it in the connector. And now I'll install the light. I'm not going to be using the neutral in this instance, but it's available for something like a timer switch, so I'll just put it in the back of the box. It meets code as long as it's in the box and available. Now I'll put the black wire to one of the brass colored terminals and the red wire to the other brass colored terminal. So here we have our switch nicely installed with the brand new cable coming into it that includes a neutral and we have turned on the circuit breaker and there you go. Look at that. So that's the codes involved with having neutrals in your switch boxes. I'll put links in my video description for the Wego lever nuts in the 2, 3, and 5 connector sizes as well as the multi-pack for the Fight Electric dimmable 5 watt LED light bulbs, the new Milwaukee M12 impact driver, the Klein 1000 volt insulated screwdrivers, and the Klein wire and sheathing stripper tool. Thanks! I hope this video was helpful.